Now that we've made a sale for our business, we've actually invoiced a customer. In this case, we got paid, and now we want to take that money and put it in the bank. And that's where the Make Deposits option comes in. It's always going to be the last step in this process. No matter how you receive the payment, whether it was a Visa card, cash, a check, you're going to have to make deposits, and you want to make sure that your deposits in QuickBooks match what actually happened at the bank. Let's go ahead and flip over to QuickBooks and talk about the Make Deposits option. The easiest way to record that deposit is to click the new button right here. And over on the right here under other you'll see bank deposit. This window here is going to be your actual deposit slip. A couple things you'll want to double check on is make sure you have the correct bank account chosen here. It's very easy to have the bank account that you last used show up in that field and then you can't find your deposit. Notice that the balance in the checking account is $1,201, and this is the date of the deposit. Let's say I'm going to make this deposit on March the 2nd. Now down at the bottom, these are the three sets of monies that we saw that were sitting in undeposited funds. What you're going to do is check off all of the ones that are going in this deposit. If all three are going to be in this deposit, you check them all off. If maybe the first two were going to be in that deposit and then maybe this last one was in a separate deposit, do them separately because you want these to match what actually happened at the bank. Let's say in this case though, all three are going to be deposited. A couple of things when you're looking at this list. Here you can go and change the payment type if you didn't do it when you were actually receiving the payment. You've also got a place for a memo if you'd like to fill that in. And then you can see there's the reference number column and then the amount column over on the right. My deposit will be $2,241.52. Now right down here it says cash back goes to. If you happen to have a business bank account, you're not going to be able to get cash back, but as a sole proprietor you could. If you're going to keep some cash, then you would say cash back goes to this account and you would pick whichever account this went to. You would also be able to have a memo and if you were going to keep 20 bucks, you could type that in and it would deduct it from this total right up here. There's also a place to add funds to this deposit. If I click this little arrow, it's going to open up this part here and I can add some additional monies. Now this could be something like maybe you got a rebate from Staples. You could type that in. If that was the situation, it would say received from Staples. The account would be office expenses or office supplies. Pick whichever account you actually used when you purchased the items for that rebate and put it back to the same account. You've got a place for description, the method, and the amount of money. It could be you're also going to put some personal money into the business. If that's the case, then the account you want to choose is that owner equity, if you remember us talking about that in an earlier module. But remember that everything that goes into a deposit is not always income to the business, so make sure that this goes back to the correct account if you're adding additional funds. Notice if you need more than the two lines, you could add additional lines and have as many lines as you'd like here. You can also add a memo to this deposit if you'd like, or add an attachment down at the bottom. And that's all you need to do as far as making a deposit. Now a couple of just other options, you could print this deposit out down at the bottom, or make it recurring. It could be that you have a customer set up on automatic draft where they actually pay you $1,000 a month, let's say, and this would be that deposit. Lots of different scenarios there. I'm going to go ahead and hit save and close down at the bottom. And at this point, the money's actually going to be in my checking account. Remember, it's $2,241.52. Now that whole process of invoicing a customer, receiving a payment, and making that deposit has been taken care of. Now let's go look in the checking account and see if we can find it. It just so happens that on the overview right over here where we are, the checking account is here. That is one way to link to it to look at the balance. Another way would be going down to accounting to our chart of accounts and just opening it that way. Any of this would work. I'm going to go ahead and view the register. When I look in the register, you'll notice that there's my deposit right there. Notice it says split because it's split amongst multiple line items. In this case, we had three different transactions that went on the deposit itself. 
I'm going to go ahead and cancel that and that's the process of actually making a deposit. The next thing I want to do is take you over into section six and show you how to set up credit memos for customers. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get a free QuickBooks Online Essential Keyboard Shortcuts infographic, click over there and click over there to watch more QuickBooks videos from Simon Says It.